God for our deacons and our auxiliary leaders and our mothers. I thank God for all of you that are here today. If we have any visitors here, we welcome you with Assembly Chapel love. Amen. And if you're here visiting, visitors are always welcome. The members are always expected. Just by way of announcement, just by way of announcement, uh, I think it oh, made me forget what I was going to say. <laughs> just by way of announcement, we're back each and every Sunday. Amen. 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 Somebody. We're back each and every Sunday. Amen. I've said it jokingly before, and I'll say it uh, jokingly and not jokingly again today. You've, you've had a break. Amen. Amen. I understand we travel. I understand we take vacations. I encourage you to travel. I encourage you to take your vacations. But 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 being at home tired is not is not acceptable. Amen. Amen. If you if you can't give God about an hour and a half, depending on how long the preacher is. You can't give them a little bit of time on Sunday. Uh, that, that's unacceptable. Amen. You need, if you need rest, you get your rest uh, after one o'clock. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm like, I'm like Deacon Horton. I partied hard last night. I partied past one thirty all by myself. I partied past one thirty. I told Selena, uh, no offense, Sister Dottie, no offense, Brother Junior. Duke gave a good run, and, and, and you know, Coach K is one of the best ever. He's one of the best. And he bowed out uh, with class and respect, and I honor that. But, but I told Selene, I, I said, I'm going to watch all the highlights. I'm going to watch all the interviews, all the press conferences. I'm going to take this in. And I recorded it, and I started to watch it all over. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is I knew, even though I stayed up past 1.30, I, I, I said, Alexa, get me up at 8 o'clock in the morning because I got to go to church. What I'm saying is it does not matter what you do on Saturday night. That's your choice. I know some work. Don't get me wrong. But what you, most of us, what we do on Saturday night is our choice. And you should choose to get up on Sunday morning. If you can't get up on Sunday mornings, except for work and things of that nature, if you cannot get up on Sunday morning, don't do it on Saturday night. Come on. Oh, that's some, that's some pastor talk. You know, pastor, pastor talk don't get amen. Yeah, because I want to I wanna shake it and bake it and drop it like it's hot and go from the windows to the walls and all that stuff <laughs> on Saturdays. See any windows and walls you need to go to? It need to be these right here on Sunday morning. I'll, 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 I'll go ahead and clap. Exodus chapter number three verses 11 through 14 and we're going to end this series on what does it take to get God's attention amen Exodus chapter number 3 verses number 11 through 14 11 through 14 when you have it I want you to stand if you don't have a, a electronic Bible or, or, or a paper Bible just share with your neighbor and let us all be with one mind and one accord. Amen. Amen. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go into Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. And when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I am come unto the children of Israel, shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? And what shall I say unto them? And I've been preaching for the last month just to get to this one verse. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Lord, I felt a quickening in my spirit Amen. when I saw that. You may be seated as we continue with the series. What will it take for God to get your attention? And today I do want to use a subtopic, and that is what's in the name. 
what is in a name. Let us repeat the Semitic prayer. Father, please bless the preaching and the preaching of your word. Bless me to hear do a growing Christ as a result of receiving your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, you may retire. Let's give our ushers a round of applause. What is in a name? Times have changed here recently. Well, not recently, but times have changed. Whereas, and I don't say this to offend anyone, but it, it, it is just the truth. Uh, times have changed to where names are not as important as, you know, just you liking the way they sound. I'm, I'm not opposed to that because, you know, we want to name our children intelligent names. We want to name our children uh, uh, prayerfully ones that are kind of easy to spell. Amen. But uh, I'm not necessarily talking about the group here on today, but I have seen some names uh, that are out there. And I have to carefully mention some of these names because, like I said, somebody may be offended, but it just seems like uh, there's not a lot of thought. It's definitely not a, not a lot of thought compared to the names of the Old Testament. Names of the Old Testament, they all meant something. Amen. And, and we were joking, but I have seen where, where children that were born in the year 19, they're named COVID. And, and they're named uh, Corona. Now, I don't know if they named them after the beer or the disease, but I don't know how much thought went into that name. I've heard names, uh, what's, what's the, I don't want to ask the question because some, uh, somebody that drank it might say it out loud, get happy. Um, I've heard the names Cavassier and things of that nature, Alizé, and all that stuff. Heard all of these names that may or may not have, I wasn't there, taking up much thought. But, 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 when you think about, if anybody is in here that's childbearing age, I want you to think about the future when you place a name on your child. Think, think, think about, the repercussions. Think, so, think about the consequences. <coughs> Don't name the her. <laughs> have a male child. Please don't name him her. <laughs> ain't gonna comment because I don't know where that's coming from. <laughs> it's coming from the hurt in my heart. <laughs> I, 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 I went through my entire life. I feel your pain, deep. Because I did go through my entire life avoiding the name Oliver. <laughs> and I was mad at my parents because daddy's middle name was Oliver. He didn't have to go by it and they gave me it for a first name. And I was thinking if it wasn't good enough for him, why did you tag it with me? And I can remember the day that I started hating that name and I'm still talking about the name. I, the day uh, Shantae, I started hating that name was when we all had uh, an assembly at Lincoln Elementary School in Oregon Hill. And the screen came down, projector came on, and they showed Oliver Twist. Oh, and when the Oliver Twist came up on the screen, it seemed like every child in the gymnasium turned around and looked at me. And from that day forward, I begged each and every teacher, don't ever call me Oliver. And we had a substitute, and it got down to my name. You know, back then, they used to call your name for roll. And when I knew it was coming to get, get into my name, I just raised my hand and say here, so she wouldn't have to say it. But at any rate, I want to talk about today what's in a name. I'm not going to trouble your patience very long, but I do want to make some points as I conclude this series. Because there is a name that we know that is above every name. We know that there is a name that, that, that you know, every knee is going to have to bow to. And every tongue is going to have to confess that he is the Lord, of, uh, the, the, the Son of God. But what I want to talk about on today is, is, is something very important to our going forth 
from here on out. Is that all right? Can I talk to you for a few moments? Yeah, yeah. We see here from talk to text, we see here where Moses has, has, has had the encounter with the burning bush. Amen. We see where God has drawn Moses' attention to the bush. And once Moses' attention was drawn to the bush, we see where uh, the angel of the Lord was there and he spoke to Moses. We see where he demanded, not, not asked for gently, but he commanded Moses to take off his shoes. He commanded Moses not to come too close. Why? Because the ground he was standing on was holy. And Moses was, he, God demanded Moses, just like he is demanding us. He demanded Moses to have reverence for the house of God. And as we talked about on last week or week before, I really don't remember, but we talked about wherever uh, the intimate presence of God is. It's his territory. It's his house. Amen. I don't care if you're standing at the, in the kitchen washing dishes, wherever the powerful presence of God shows up, it is no longer your house. It becomes his house. That's why when you are filled with the precious Holy Spirit of God, your body does not belong to you. Come on, talk to us, Brother Paul. Your body no longer belongs to you, but your body belongs to God. Where is it in Scripture? The Bible teaches us, don't you know? Paul asked the question. He said, don't you know that your body does not belong to yourself, but your body is the temple of God? Why is my body the temple of God? Because the presence of the Lord dwells within. If your body does not belong to God, then we need to back up and preach some other sermon. But when God dwells on the inside, I heard the songwriter say, the Holy Ghost is on the inside, showing up on the outside. I forgot the end of it. What is it? That's it right there. And so our temples, are, 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 they, we belong to God. That's why, that's why, and I, trust me, I'm not talking about tattoos and piercings and all of those things. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about giving God reverence through your being. Amen. Amen. If, 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 if I thought that wearing a tattoo would send you to hell, then I need to stop preaching right now because I'm standing in the pulpit with one. Amen. Amen. So, so that, the, the Bible is deeper than that. Now, let me give a disclaimer. Not saying go out and get tattoos because it doesn't matter. That's not what I'm saying. It's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying don't condemn yourself. Amen. Amen. I, I'm not saying dig your own and go get uh, your name, Harold, across your back. <laughs> For <a> tattoo. <laughs> now, let me see you out there cutting grass. Wife beat on Harold across your back. But 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 he's he's telling he's telling him that wherever I am, you reverence that place. That is why we are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That's why we are to enter into his courts with praise. That is why we should have the correct attitude and mindset when we go to God in prayer. Because when we go to God in prayer, we are invoking his presence in our situation. And when you invoke his presence in any situation, you are to reverence him. That's why we give him glory when, when, when he shows up and he shows out. We thank him before he even starts working. The Bible says be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Don't get stressed out for anything. But with prayer and supplication with what? That's right. Thanksgiving. Make your request made known unto God. And the God of peace that surpasses all understanding will keep your heart and your mind through that name. Amen. Amen. Christ Jesus. And so now we're at the juncture where Moses has received his assignment. And his assignment from God was that I'm going to send you to Egypt. Now you remember, he was the prince in the palace of Egypt at one time. And, 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 and God used the good time in Moses' life to use it to God's glory to go back and deliver his people. 
And so he said, I want to go. I want you to go to that same Egypt. I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. And you're going to command to Pharaoh that he let God's people go. That's what Exodus means. Exodus is the, the freedom and the movement of the people. I didn't learn that lesson in church. I learned that lesson listening to Robert Nestor Marley and the song Exodus, Movement of Josh People. And I was singing and singing and singing. And when I finally got smart enough to read the Bible, I said, Bob Marley didn't come up with that by himself. He got that from the Lord. There's nothing new under the sun. And so, and that's, that's, let me, let me, let me parenthetically inject that for a moment. You never know when and how and where God is speaking to your spirit. Amen. 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 If, if the only time you hear God is sitting in the church, then again, we have some more problems. And so Moses gets the assignment. Somebody said he got the assignment. Moses gets the assignment. And just like you and I, just like all of us in here, most of us in here, as soon as we get the assignment from God, we want to start making all types of excuses. Don't you know that God knows even the number of the hairs on your head? Don't you know that God already knows what you're capable of and what you're not capable of according to your physical capabilities? He already knows all of these things. He already know that your attention span is 20 minutes. He already know that you, that, 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 that you have the problems that you have. You know, when he called me to preach, I was 260 pounds and I couldn't stand here and holler and talk for 30 minutes. He already knew that. He already knew that I wasn't the brightest crayon in the box. He already knew that I wasn't the sharpest pencil in the stack. He already knew all of these things. He already knew that, that, that I was stupid, but I knew that I was stupid, and it almost made me smart. <laughs> Won't he do it? So I didn't have to explain to him. That, that's an inside family joke. I didn't have to explain to him what I could not do. All I had to do was say, yes, Lord. How many, how much time can you save yourself by just saying yes, Lord, when you get your assignment? Let's, 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 let's go to the book. Moses said unto God, who am I? That question doesn't make sense from the beginning. If you don't mind, I want to go scripture by scripture today. It doesn't make any sense. God who created and sustained you. God who blew the breath of life into our nostrils going back to Adam. Why are you going to ask God, who am I? You have to realize God does not make mistakes. And when he asked him, who am I, that I should go to Pharaoh, he's saying, I'm, I'm not high enough. I'm not mighty enough. I have a speech impediment. I stutter a little bit. There's some things going on in my life right now. I'm, I'm not a priest. I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a shepherd and I don't even have my own sheep yet. He's taking a man who's used to being the assistant pastor, watching over uh, his, his father-in-law's sheep. He was the assistant pastor. He was the man sitting next to the man. And now you want me to go into enemy territory and lead three million people. Who am I to do this? And, 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 and God does something interesting here, Jalen. He says, he says, he, uh, Moses said, I, uh, gee, God, let me get this straight. Let me slow down. God says, certainly I will be with thee. What do you, what do you, what do you see here that is interesting? I'll tell you what I see that is interesting since I have a microphone. What I see that is interesting is God ignored the question that Moses asked. God didn't waste his time <laughs> explaining to Moses who he was. Moses was not a young buck. Moses was up in age. Mm -hmm. And if he didn't know who he was by then, then he may have never figured it out. Amen, somebody. Amen. Know your purpose in the kingdom. Know your purpose 
in the kingdom. And God totally put the egg on Moses because he didn't tell Moses, waste time telling Moses who he was. But what he did was promise Moses that he would be with him. I need to stop and tell somebody on today, instead of limiting yourself over who you think you are, you need to let go and let God be God in your situation. It does not matter who I think I am, but what matters is that God promised to be with me and never forsake me and to be with me until the end of the time. I don't care what daddy think about me. I don't care what mama think about me. I don't care if you scandalize in my name. I don't care what you think about me. If God said he was with me, then it's going to work out. Let me go to the scripture. If God is for me, who in the world can be against me? Somebody shout greater. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Oh, I like when you say I can't do something because it motivates me through Jesus Christ to show and prove, not you, but to show and prove the devil that told you to doubt me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Is it, is it good today? I know it's good to me. Thank God for his word. And so he ignores them. He says, certainly. This is without shadow of doubt. Certainly, somebody shout, certainly, God is with me. Somebody didn't believe that. Because everybody shouted certainly, but when I said God is with me, it kind of tapered down a little bit. Come on, I need the ones with faith to outweigh the ones without faith. Say certainly, God is with me. God is with you on your job search. God is with you in changing your life. God is with you with getting better help. God is with you in your life. He's going to help you be found. Certainly, God is with me. That's something that you may have to remind yourself of from time to time when you get down because every day is not a a crystal stairway. Some days you're not going to feel good, as good as you did on other days. I want you to remind yourself of the not so good days that certainly God is with me. And for a commercial break, remember, we are more abundantly blessed in every area of our lives. Back to our regularly scheduled program. And so, he says, when you, when, you, when you brought forth the people out of Egypt, he says, I, I, I have sent thee. He's, he's, ah, I messed up again. He says, and, and certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee. This is the point that I want to talk about, and I'll be done in 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes. He says, he says, he says, I have sent thee a token. I, I keep messing up. <laughs> certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. What does that, what does that tell you? What does that do that's a little different from what we're used to? We want signs. A token is a sign. We want the sign and the wonder to show us before we go into the, the, uh, the assignment. But God said. I think we should follow the Bible more than we follow our intuitions. Amen? Amen. And God said that the token unto thee that I have sent thee, you're not going to, you, you're going to know that I sent you after it's over. There's going to be a sign, all right. There's going to be a wonder, all right. But the sign and the wonder, I want somebody to get this in your spirit. God, I just heard this on the red throne from heaven. God just gave me this fresh, the hot and now sign is on. God said to tell somebody that the sign that he was with you is the celebration that you are about to have when you come out. Stop looking for the sign and the wonder and look for God to direct your path. Amen. He said, I will give you a token. I'm going to give you a blessing. I'm going to give you a sign. You will get a wonder after you see that the children of Israel has come out of Egypt. You are going to have, I want, I want to prophesy, you had better prepare yourself for a great celebration. You're looking for the sign and the wonder going into the battle when God said the sign and the wonder is going to be that I brought you out of the battle. Somebody better start thanking God. 
That should keep you from getting discouraged when hell is breaking loose in your situation. Because you better know that one, certainly God is with me. And when I get through this, my praise is going to be far more intense than it was when I went in. I think it was David that said, I'll become more vile than this. I'll become more undignified than this. And Lord knows we have been having some vile and undignified praise and worship here at Assembly Chapel. I cannot wait to see how God is going to move when the battle is over. My God, my God, give me, I ain't even going to say how long I'm going to be today. The ant just went out of the building. Somebody said, huh. Man, I hate we had last week off now. But anyway, back to the day. He says here, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Mount Hora, that we further uh, later known as Sinai. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say to them, The God of the fathers sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What's his name? Mm-hmm. Letting them know that they, it, it's, it's not going to be an easy task because they've been in bondage for such a long time. And then here comes Moses talking about God is going to deliver you. It's kind of like church when people are going through and going through and going through and the preacher gets up and tells them that God is with them. Certainly God is going to be with them and they're going to be rewarded on the backside and things are going to be all right. Somebody sitting here now saying, what authority is that man preaching under? I don't know if God, he, pastor doesn't understand uh, the intensity of what I'm going through. Pastor don't understand that I'm about to lose it all, including my mind. Pastor doesn't understand uh, everything that's going on in my life for him to stand up there and tell me that I'm going to be rewarded on the backside. Well, you're absolutely right. Pastor does not understand everything that you're going to. All I know is what God has revealed to me. But what I do know is that God is for you and if God is for you that means that you will come out because what did he say in Jeremiah 29 and 11 I know the thoughts that I have for you they are thoughts of peace and not of evil even though you're going through evil right now my thoughts are of peace and not of evil to get you to an expected end and I know I don't know what you're going through but I do know what God said and he says, he says, he says, and Moses saying, who am I going to tell them that sent me? And he said, tell them, I'm the God of your fathers. That's who sent you. And they shall say to me, what is his name? And what shall I say unto them? And it is important that Moses did ask, who shall I say sent me? Because it's all in the name. And if he told the children of Israel the wrong name, if he had said uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar sent me, then it wouldn't have been an effect. If he had said King Saul sent me, it wouldn't have been of any effect. If he said David sent me, it wouldn't have been of any effect. But when he said God sent me, that changed the whole narrative of the Egyptians' mindset. And in scripture, and important, scripturally important, that he gave them the right name. You see, you can pray what you want to pray, but don't pray it in the name of Pastor King. Don't don't pray it in the name of Deacon Horton or Deacon Jerome. Don't pray it in the name of the First Lady. Don't pray it in the name of a Zodiac sign. If you want God to answer your prayers, you better go in the name and the authority of none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when he asked what the name was, it was relevant because the patriarchs had to go back with the name. Abraham called him the most high, Genesis 14 and 22. He also called him Jehovah Jireh. Because God provided. He's been named 
Jehovah Rapha. He's been named Jehovah Nisi. He's been named Jehovah Shalom. And he's been named Jehovah Kwana because of his jealousy for his people. And we don't have to get all tied up, twisted up in the covenant names and trying to remember them. Because uh, over in the New Testament, when he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The only name that we ought to remember now is none other than the name of Jesus Christ. I'm starting to feel like having church in here on today. Uh, it's good to remember the covenant names. It might even do a Bible study on the covenant names. But as long as you can remember to call out the name of Jesus, that's all of the covenant names tied up in one. Because there's no separation between the Son and the Father. There's no separation between the Father and the Holy Ghost. And any time I call that name, I know he's on the right hand side of the throne. And when I call the name of Jesus, I know that God is hearing my prayer. And that's why we seal our prayers under the authority of Jesus. Because when we call on Jesus, I'm at rest. When I call on Jesus, I know everything is going to be all right. But the main thing that I like about the Old Testament and the names that they called on God is what God told Moses to call him himself. He said, don't worry about the covenant names. Don't worry about all of the Jehovah's. Don't worry about the Elohim. El Shaddai's. Don't worry about the El Shaddai's and Elohim's. Don't worry about all of these El Elyon's. Don't worry about the Adonai's because that's what the Jehovah came from. Jehovah comes from Yahweh. Yahweh is, a, is the symbol that the Hebrew people used to refer to God. And in English translation, it starts to be called Jehovah. So when we praise Jehovah, we're praising Adonai. And when we're praising Adonai, we're praising Yahweh. And we're praising Yahweh. We're praising Jesus. But God told Moses, he said, I want you to kiss it. What do you mean, Pastor? Keep it simple and smart. Don't worry about the confusing names. Because everybody is not of Hebrew nationality. But I'm going to give 
I'm sorry, I promised a bunch of y'all that was a holiday. I, I didn't told a lot to you. Because I get excited. Because, because, whatever you need, just go to the IF. You see, that's why, let me tell y'all something. Turn that off. This is for in the house. <laughs>